Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number nine. The ninth annual Anderson Classic, skipping one year for COVID. Let's hear it for the visiting Fort Bend Dallas Vikings. Officially the home team. Against Sir Anderson Trojan. Let's do the starting lineups for the Vikings. He wears number one, Mr. Josh Lee. He wears number two, Terry Montgomery. He wears number five, Carter Truska. Number 11, Nico Walls. Rounding out the lineup for the Vikings, number 22, Greg Upong. And now, put your hands together for your 2021-2022 Anderson Trojan. Starting lineups. He's a junior. Number one, Mick Whitlow. Also a junior. He wears number 10, Bennett Blackerby. He's a senior. Number 11, handles the ball, Mr. Mike Wagner. The big man, he wears number 24, he's a senior, Nate Langley. And rounding out the starting lineup, he's in the top 100 in Texas, number five, Jack Francis. All righty, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry to join you a little bit late here as we are just now getting started. Had some technical difficulties on our end getting going, but now we are ready to go. And we are here at the Anderson Classic. Back after a year taken off for COVID, and we are happy to be here. Anderson coming in at 1-0. Unfortunately, weren't able to get their first game broadcast for you as it did take place at 8 in the morning, and I was... Personally, I was in class taking a test at that point myself. for Travis. But we are here and we will have Anderson's remainder uh, of their slate through this tournament for you. They will have one game tonight, one game Friday, and one game Saturday. Not sure when that game's going to be. Uh, if they win tonight, that game should be at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Otherwise, it will be at 2.30. Trojans enter at 1-0 after taking down Central Catholic by 10 in the early slate. Their opponent here is the Dulles Vikings as they're going to start it off with a turnover as this is a Fort Bend ISD school. They're down in Sugarland. Very nice of them to take part in this tournament. Got a lot of teams here. Anderson should get a, a wide variety of teams played in this tournament as they get it into Francis in the post on the other end. Up to Langley and back outside to Whitlow. Trojans working on offense. Mitchell all the way in, and that's going to be an offensive foul going against the Trojans. That's the right call. Coming in to take that charge, Nico Walls. Good job getting in position and getting set and taking that charge. So Trojans turn it over on their first possession. Both teams, one possession, one turnover. Now on the other end, Trojans going to try and get another stop. Over there on the wing, that's number five, Carter Truscott, part of the starting lineup. That's Josh Lee with the ball. Nico Walls, the man that drew the charge, taking a three and knocking it down. That's a deep shot. And Dulles going to open things up. The Vikings on the board, three to nothing. So here's Francis working his way around. He gets it over to Blackerby. He's going to try three of his own. That's going to be too strong. Langley there to bat it around. Tried to go up and get it. Couldn't. Truscott comes down with it the other way. Let's try to get a little more height on the old camera. That's a lot better. Here we go. That's going to be another deep triple taken. That's no good. Nico Walls trying to make it two for two, and that's going to be out of bounds. Anderson basketball. right into the thick of it tonight. Kudos to this, uh, well, all the teams that played today. The slate was chock full. We've been going pretty much 12 hours, nine games in this gym today as Francis is going to be stuck double teamed in the backcourt and he's going to turn it over. 
Dulles takes or er, Dulles takes possession. It's Montgomery with it. He turns it right back over to Francis. Now Jack rifling it ahead, and that's going to be another turnover. Trojans playing a little too fast and loose to start things off. There's Truscott. Gets it to Lee. Now there's Walls with it again. Loses it. Blackerby defending, and Langley there on the glass to take it away. Blackerby pushing the other direction, and Bennett loses it from behind. Sloppy play in this first quarter. These first two minutes, Trojans are scoreless. Derek Armour already at the table to check in. So here's Walls for Dulles. Trescott working his way around the perimeter. He's going to fade from the mid-range. That's no good. Bennett is there to collect the rebound as well. Now there's Wagner passing ahead to Whitlow. Whitlow had it taken away, and that's going to go out of bounds off of the Vikings. So we'll have a minute to take a little bit of a breather as we get started in this Anderson Classic for the Trojans, the team in their bracket. The team's in their bracket, excuse me. It's a... Uh, Central Catholic, who they already took down today, and then Dulles. So they are looking to go 2-0, and which would set them up for prime seeding position as Langley spins into the post. They're going to have a foul underneath. Uh, it's going to be against Dulles, but not sure exactly what the call was. I think it was just a shove in the back of the post as uh, Langley was trying to get, get something working underneath for Anderson. But now it'll be Wagner on the inbound with five and a half to go in the first. Looking inside, they get Langley. Nate doesn't have good position here. He'll just have to reset. They get it out to Blackerby on the left wing on the pass from Whitlow. Bennett going to pull up from the free throw line. Can't get that one to go too far to the left. Anderson starting out sluggishly because this is their second game of the day. I mean, it's everybody's second game of the day here. As that one is blocked by Blackerby. He got number 22, Greg Uppong, going up. As here's Bennett all the way coast to coast and lays it up and in. Bennett's really been coming on this season for Anderson, as that's going to be a full court pass too far out of the reach. And that's going to be a quick turnover. Anderson will get the ball back with a chance to take the lead here. Trojans coming off our last broadcast, which is a heartbreaking loss to Westwood. As here's Wagner driving to the paint, gets to the basket, lays it up, and he's fouled. So the Trojans already getting some of that bitter taste out of their mouth with a win this morning. Going to try and make it 2-0. Vikings, number 21. So Mike to the line. Mike Wagner to the line. He'll shoot two. In the game before this, we watched Cypress Falls take out Holmes High School. Wagner takes the first shoot. One more. As Mike hits the first. So now Blackaby and Wagner into the scoring column for the Trojans. Mike looking to make it two for two and give his team their first lead of the game. And he does just so. Pushing the pace. Here comes Walls. Now back over onto the wing. That's number 21, Isaiah Meta. Now back up top, it's Okpong again. A lot of motion for the Vikings. It's going to lead to an open three for Walls. It's no good. Black will be going up once again to grab that rebound. He's attacking the glass very strongly in this first quarter. Blackerby, that was going to Francis, but Bennett thought it was going to go out of bounds if he didn't save it. That's a good job. Is it results in an open corner triple for him? No good. Rebound's going to hit the ground before anyone touches it. And coming the other way is Walls. All the way to the basket. Wagner in some good defense, and Walls wanted a foul. So here comes Francis the other direction off to Langley. Nate's going to go up with it. That's a blocking foul and one. Looks like we'll count the basket. Foul so Langley back Michael like he never Roland left. Just First and one basket of the game the for the Trojans line. for either team. That Anderson is going to get some more free throws out of this. It's going to be their third of the game. They're two for two. Langley's been better at the line as his career has gone on, as this one rattles around the ball. There's Lee up top. Metso with it now. They get it over to Truscott. It's going to lead to an open three for Lee. That's going to be no good. Rebound goes underneath to Langley. Now here comes Wagner. Wagner, all eyes always up. Gets into the lane. Going to swing it across. What a find for Francis. Open in the corner. Jack can't repay him. Rebound going to bat around over to Whitlow. Whitlow going to go up. His shot no good. Batted around. Out of bounds. It'll stay here. So 
So with 3.37 to go in the first, Trojans lead it by four. Wagner looking. He finds Francis underneath. Jack, one dribble, goes up, and they're going to get him for a travel. Picked up that back foot a little bit too early, and Francis turns the ball over. Fans don't like it. And we'll have a timeout over here for Dulles. It'll be our and first of the game. Out. Halfway through the first quarter here at 7-3 Anderson. As Coach Pittsburgh getting word on whether or not it's a full or half timeout. It'll be just 30 seconds, so we'll go ahead and keep it here. We'll take you through some of the other schedules here for, for, uh, for this Anderson Classic here. They're going to shoot a layup, a free throw, and a three-pointer. First one to make all three. All righty. So in Pool A, we have Anderson, Texas Central Catholic, and Dulles. Central Catholic 1-1 uh, one and one now after beating Dullis. Anderson this looking to send the, the Vikings to 0-2. And, and then in Pool B, we have Medina Valley, Rockwall, and Travis. Texas that is not the Austin cents. Travis High School. Pool C, uh, we have Goose Creek, St. Stephen's. That is the oh. Austin St. Stephen's, Kingwood. Deep and then in Pool D, we have Holmes, Cypress Falls, and Westlake. So Anderson... They are on the far other side of the bracket, so Anderson might not see them at all. Uh, but if they do, it'll definitely be later into the tournament. But no matter, Anderson will host the Westlake Chaparrales in their next home game, which is uh, right here on Tuesday, as these games are all technically neutral site. As Francis just picks that out of the air, pass off to Langley. Gets it to go and one. Nate Langley back to back and one buckets. He'll head to the line for one more. Jack Francis. Number 23. Picking that ball out of the air like his name was Trayvon Diggs. Langley back to the line for another M1 try. Dumps it off to his center slash power forward slash whatever position all these kids play. As Langley heads back to the line. He's got two baskets, two fouls. Well, I should say zero fouls as two fouls committed on him. He can't make the free throw, but Whitlow gets it in the corner. He's just going to have to fire it up. Francis didn't touch it. Who touched it? That one kind of fell in a weird intermediate area. Wasn't sure if either player touched it. So that'll just be off of Anderson. It'll go the other way, but it is 9-3 in favor of your Trojans. Trapped in the corner is Montgomery. They get it back outside to Josh Lee. Back to Montgomery. He's being hounded. Double team comes for him. He's stuck in that corner. Dumps it off to Lee. That's a good find, and Whitlow knocks it away. Gets it up again, and this time Whitlow's going to foul Lee. He got his own board, and he'll just head back to the line, or head to the line, excuse me. So he got him once, but he couldn't get him again. That'll send Josh Lee to the line for his first free throws. Josh Lee to the line. It'll be an opportunity for the Vikings to scratch back into this one a little bit. First shot's up and good for Lee. Just the first one. He'll shoot another. As Price and Armour are going to check in for Wagner and Whitlow. Oh, hold on. Oh, please. Oh, I, I need something desperately to happen. I need a pick and roll for Price and Armour. That way it's CP3 dishing it off to DA number 22, and we'll just have a regular Phoenix Suns situation. Best way to get rid of blood on a jersey is to use a compound called H2O2. We know what that is. Let me know. Back to the lines, Lee. Can't make them both, but the rebound goes underneath, and it's taken away by Dulles. It was, looked like Ukpong underneath number 22. But the possession arrow favors Anderson right now. But a good job of getting that switch back for his team. It's now nine to four, as Blackerby's stuck in the backcourt all alone. He just has to fire it up to Francis. Now Jack's in the open court. Euro step layup, gets it to go and one! It's another one for the Trojans. He's, excuse me, these Dulles Vikings are trying to draw entirely too many charges right now. They got one early, and that was the right call, but ever since then, Anderson's just been taking it right to him, getting baskets, getting fouls. That's Jack's first basket of the game. He gets the free throw to boot. Trojans now lead it by eight. Early in the first quarter here. We got a late start, 8.30, and good job on everyone as they had games 
just jam-packed. There wasn't a, a free period in this gym all day. And we still got managed, uh, we still managed to get started right at 8.30 here tonight. So really good job of keeping this thing moving here. As here's Lee with it in the corner, Price defending, got two small guys on each other. As he's gonna go for the floater way too strong as Armore picks up the board. As Armore's gonna pass it ahead and that's gonna be taken away as here come the Vikings. That's Walls with it, jab step on the wing for Montgomery. Now Montgomery working on Blackerby. He kicks it to the corner, but Francis is there to knock it away. Jack Francis one-on-one, -on -one, gets to the basket, lays it in. Francis for two. Those long legs carrying him ahead of the pack. Puts the Trojans up by 10. That's Francis' second basket. He's got five. Now into the corner, it's Pong. Now back up top to Lee. He try Ooh, what a nice pass underneath. That's a basket in the foul for Carter Truscott. An incredible pass on the backdoor That's cut. Count the basket, fouls on Trojans, 24, Hank Langley. It's going to go against Langley. As we have some subs, it's going to be Fred Dale along with Mike Wagner. So QB1 into the game, so Price going to check out. To the line. Dale knocked down a nice basket in that Westwood game. This is only one of the night. But here's Truscott, up a nice finish. Rattles around, no good, but Anderson wasn't ready, or they mistimed the rebound, rather. And there to put it away is Truscott. So a quick, oh, Fred Dale on the other end. Can't get it to go on the turnaround jump shot, but a quick four-point possession for the Vikings. And they'll have it right back as Francis is going to pick up Truscott out there on the perimeter. He kills his dribble right there on the elbow. And now we'll back outside to Walls. Walls likes to pull it from deep. Step back. Got that one to go from the uh, from the elbow. Nico Walls, Nico a couple Wall. nice baskets on the game for the Vikings. And now Trojans are just down to a six-point lead after a 6-0 run here for Dulles. Now Francis stuck in the backcourt. He's just going to have to get ahead to Blackerby. But now they've sort of got numbers as Bennett throws it up. And they're going to call that on the floor. I mean, he, had, he had on the floor. looked like he had gathered to me, but Vikings, number 22, Trojans will take that on the floor. Either way, they're a ball. So now just a four-point lead for Anderson. A minute left to go here in the first quarter. It's 14 to 10. Wagner looking on the inbound. Gets it to Francis, the three-pointer. That looked short all the way. And oh, lucky bounce goes to Fort Bend. And now coming up with it is Montgomery. Truscott with it. As Blackerby takes it right away. Two on two break for the Trojans. Blackerby going to take it himself. Gets it to go. Coming off one of his best shooting nights of the season from beyond the arc. That's his second bat, or rather, I believe that's his that's his second basket of the game. He's got four. As here's Lee from downtown, he gets it. With that three-pointer, he made one free throw before. Now he's got four points. 31 seconds, Francis trying to get the ball up. They are just able to get it over to Armour. Now here's Wagner with 24 seconds. Blackerby fading to the corner. The three is no good. Rebound to Truscott. And passing ahead to Ukpong. Pong back outside, here's Walls, he's left open for three. That's gonna be an air ball, or rather not quite an air ball and just glancing off the rim. Some quick substitutions now for the Vikings. Coming in is number 23, Tylen Pierre, along with Isaiah Meta. Whitlow into the game now. They've got Campbell Duncan in for his first minutes action. They're in along with Wagner and Francis as well as Blackerby. So eight seconds for Anderson to try and get something off before the end of the quarter. Francis going to attack the basket. Kicks it back outside to Campbell Duncan. Now back to Francis fading into the corner. Jack's got a good little jump shot from the short corner, and it just First rattles quarter. out. It was a good job from Jack to relocate, but he couldn't get it to go. And after all of that, Trojans led by as many as 10. Dulles able to cut it down to just three. And after one, the Trojans acting as the road team lead it by three at 16 213 going to go ahead and take our first break on the broadcast. I'd like to thank our sponsors for Trojan Basketball, Howie Breen and Herman, who's the sponsor of the Trojan Classic as well as Encotech tonight. Going to go ahead and take 30 seconds. We'll be right back. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another verse. 
Rangers breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers! 16 seconds, really close up the corner, rotates to Wilson, she fires the three, oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back in for the start of the second quarter. Want to thank Academy Sports and Outdoors for sponsoring us on Vibe. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop in store or online at academy.com and you can get all the hottest styles from brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. So it will be Viking Ball to start our next eight minutes. They trail it by three, but they get it inbound to number 11, Nico Walls, who's got five. Here's Montgomery working around the perimeter. Blackerby defending him. Bennett's been pretty good on both ends of the floor tonight. Here's Lee. Langley out on him. They get it back to Walls. Francis. And that's a good tag team there by Whitlow and Francis to both cause a miss there. Wagner loses it, though. And now we have jump ball underneath, and that's going to make it Trojan ball. We have an injured Viking on the other end. It looked like... It was, it was Walls when he went up to, to shoot it. He came down, and it looked like he may have been stepped on on that, on that ankle because he's coming off the, field, or the court here hobbled as Carter Truscott's going to check in for him. But Anderson with a three-point lead after getting the jump ball. Wagner. Langley. Now Nate going to drive it to the basket, lays it up and gets it to go. Nate Langley has been a beast rolling into the basket tonight. Seven points for him. He's got seven of his team's 18. Now here's Truscott with it. They get it over to Lee. Lee going to drive in on Whitlow. Mitch doing a good job cutting him off. Blackerby comes in to take that away. It was an entry pass. And now here comes Anderson, three on one. Francis lays it up, and he is fouled hard. Jack's all right. He'll pop right back up. Grimacing a little bit. I mean, it couldn't have felt good, but I think Jack's going to be okay. And good news here is Wall's already ready to check back in. And Colin Page going to check in. Had one of the most clutch plays of the night against Westwood as Jack knocks down the first. Jack's good on the first shoot level. Page in for Whitlow. So Francis, team high of six. Well, excuse me, Langley with a team high of six. Seven. Two for two. Okay, let me, let me just restart all together. Both Jack and Nate Langley have seven points right now. And they trap, good job, and that forces a turnover. Page and Francis trapping Walls right there at half court. And Walls still doesn't look quite 100%. We haven't seen much of that half-court trap from the Trojans in the last couple seasons, but if that's going to be another thing they work into, they're going to be even harder to score on. As here's Langley again. He's going to take it inside. He's killed his dribble. They have to get it back out to Wagner. Wagner going to pull up from the mid-range. That's going to be good. Soft touch on the jump shot for Mike Wagner. He's got four points tonight. Trojan lead back up to nine. They've led by as many as ten. This here's Truscott. Back outside to Montgomery. Page defending him. He's going to pull it back outside. Page isolated one-on-one. -on -one. He'll just pull it back. Now here's Lee. Swing it across. Meto with it. Page almost had it. Now back out to Lee. And we shall reset. Of course, no shot clock. Anderson already in the bonus. Just three team fouls so far for the Trojans. Six minutes to go here in the half. Meadow with it. Back out to Montgomery. Screen comes, Page, good defense. And Page knocked it away, and that's going to be a travel. So no steal, but he forces the turnover anyway. Colin Page showing some on-ball defensive ability in these last couple games. You might have to get him into the rotation just for stuff like that because those are winning plays. I mean, Anderson was dead in the water before he had that clutch steal. Showing that he's not just a one-sport athlete. In the running for Central Texas Offensive Player of the Year in football as a running back for the Trojans. As he throws this one up, gets it to go, and the foul. Colin Page hooping. Colin Page, down the 
two-point conversion. That was on number five. Carter Truscott. Call it Page. He's changed his number since the beginning of the season. As Nate gets it back, he's going to try and go up with it. That's got to be a jump ball. Yep. So jump ball, and uh, that will give the ball back to Dulles. But the Trojans have their largest lead in the ballgame. It's 11 points, and the Vikings are going to go ahead and burn another timeout. 5.28 to go here in the quarter. On the floor. Looks like it's going to be a full timeout from here, so we're going to go ahead and take a break ourselves. We'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast tonight. We'll be right back with more Trojan Hoops. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. VipeU also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each VipeU ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about VipeU today. Back in for more second quarter action. Vikings ball. Trojans lead it by 11. Looking to make it 2-0. and And if they win here tonight, their game will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow. We will, of course, be carrying that for you. Very sorry that, and here's Colin Page knocking that one away. He has been feisty. Now, awfully sorry we weren't able to, to broadcast the first game of this tournament for the Trojans, but 8.30 a.m. Is, is a bit early. I wouldn't have been able to come to that. We college students have assignments and classes, too. As here's Lee, and Lee, oof, he's bailed out with a foul. Anderson almost had another steal. Looks like Jack got a little early on that one, got his hands on him. And that's going to be another foul for the Trojans. Just their fourth of the half. Dulles already with eight team fouls. And some of those charges, you know, those are a lot of 50-50 calls. So right now, I would say the whistle going Anderson's way, and that's a kickball. That's another good call by these officials tonight. These officials are, are zeroed in. They've been, they've been working all day, and they're going to be working all weekend, so <laughs> we're getting them at their best here. All warm, all, all, all ready to go. This here's Truscott working it up on Page. Back outside to Lee. They're bringing Page in on every double as they kick it back outside to Montgomery. Now fading into the or towards the wing is Lee, and he knocks it down. That's his second three-point basket of the game for Josh Lee. That'll cut the lead to eight. As Trojans get it ahead, here's Langley. Langley into the paint, goes up with it. Too strong on that one, but Blackerby's there on the board. Back to Langley. Nate skips it across to Page. Page is going to put it on the floor, get to the basket, lay it up, and get it to go. Colin Page once again. So he couldn't get the free throw to fall, but that's his uh, second basket. He's two for two from the field. Now back across. Here's... Truscott, they get it underneath to Montgomery. That's a nice find from Carter Truscott. So 26 to 18 is Bennett Blackerby takes it the length, gets it blocked, but Langley's there to follow it. We'll get our scoreboard updated in just a minute here. It's 28-18. As here's Lee, they kick it to the corner. Ooh, nearly called for a travel, and Blackerby poked that one away and out of bounds. So 28 for the Trojans, 18 for the Vikings. They get it in. It's Ukpong with it on the inbound, and then they get it up to Lee, who's got a team-high seven points. Montgomery coming around. Lee gets a pass in to Walls on the backdoor cut. Francis uh, there in the air to affect the shot. They lob it ahead to Page. Page nearly loses it, loses it again, <laughs> and loses it for, for the final time. As here's Lee. Three and a half to go. Page in defense. <laughs> what feels like his first mistake is he's just running around out there on defense in the best possible way. 
as that's a deep miss three as Francis nearly loses it out of bounds and they're going to say he stepped on the baseline. I'm not sure if Jack did, but. Getting some chuckles from the officiating crew as Black will be going to check out, Langley going to check out. We have Duncan, Page, Price, Wagner, and Francis. So as Francis steps out of bounds and nearly was able to get it in, as Jack nearly takes it away, now back outside. Here's Montgomery. Gets it into, yeah, that's going to be a foul against Duncan. He grabbed him. So the super sophomore will be a guy that's leading this team in a couple of years. Picking up the foul, he fouled Ukpong, and now it's going to be a pass in for Josh Lee underneath. They get it outside to Trescott. Now here's Walls, five points in the game for him. Lee, ooh, thought about it and said he's just going to drive in, hit the floater from the baseline. He's undersized, but he's got a lot of scoring ability. Because here's Francis. He'll just have to get it to Duncan. Now Campbell working his way around, kicks it into the corner for Page. Page driving in, going to go up with it, misses, gets his own board, misses again, and now they're going to get him for a foul. It's Colin Page. He is, he's playing like a football player out there. <laughs> so an eight-point game after the Lee basket and the Trojan turnover. They've struggled to close these quarters here tonight. Under two and a half to go now. Langley getting ready to check back in for Anderson. It's Lee outside. Not often you get to see the Trojans wearing their blue uniforms at home. They are officially the away team here tonight, but... Even though this isn't their home gym, all these games will count as neutral site, I believe. As he was trying to find Truscott in the corner, but Truscott was trying to pop back out onto the wing. As they're going to get Colin Page, he's going to get an ovation from this student section. A wild few minutes for Colin Page. He scores two baskets. Now with 2.15 to go, the Trojans have it with a chance to tack on some more points here. Out of fouls to give now. The Vikings will be in the bonus. So here's Francis spinning to his right. Try and pull his way back to the corner. He lost it off his ankle and got it back. He, we have a Viking player that's injured. Duncan has it back. And they're going to get Campbell for a foul. Jack, he might have actually broken somebody's ankles here as Meta is going to have to hobble off the court. He's still standing uh, on the sideline there as he'll have to make his way to the bench. Able to do it under his own power, but doesn't look comfortable. I think he, uh, as Francis lost that ball, they both kind of shifted, and Meta went down. So here's Lee. That's a good backdoor cut from Mukpong, but they don't see it. Here's Montgomery. Back outside Lee. Behind the back, 144 to go. Lee directing traffic, telling everyone to clear out as he's going to try and isolate on Wagner, but then he goes away from it and gets it to Montgomery. Now Wagner, and that's going to be, uh, I think, an offensive foul on Montgomery. As they get it to Duncan, and Duncan nearly turns it over, and they're going to get him for another travel. They are just ambushing the young guy when he gets the ball in his hands, and tonight he hasn't made them pay. You can tell that some of that youth just doesn't qu quite feel comfortable with the ball in his hands when there's a lot of traffic around him. But, I mean, he's a sophomore. It's, that's a normal thing. As here's Lee, as they're going to just try and run some more clock. It's a minute 20 to go now. Wagner defending him, Lee. Back out on the left wing. He thought about the threes. He's instead going to pull it back. Here's Ukpong driving in on Wagner. He gets it into the block, but he's stuck there. Now Montgomery... Back outside to Greg. Greg's going to drive in. Euro step around Langley, and he gets it to go. That's a nice move underneath by Greg Ukpong. As pass ahead, here's Duncan. Now is his chance. He gets it into Price. Corey's just going to have to pull it outside. Into Francis, who's going to drive in. Back outside. Duncan going to try the three. Can't get that. And Francis is going to be whistled for a loose ball foul. So falling apart here a little bit at the end of this quarter once again. As that foul will send uh, the Vikings to the line, is now checking in is Liam Donahoe. It was a nice pass 
for Duncan on the other end, just a little bit too late for Price to go up with it uh, with Price's size. As here's Carter Trescott, four points on the game for him. He'll have a one and one here as it's the seventh team foul against the Trojans. Misses the front end, and that's tapped out. And it's going to be thrown off of Ukpong by Mike Wagner, and that'll go the Trojans' way. So 28-22, got some pressure coming from the Vikings. Francis has it with 40 seconds left. We know the Trojans usually like to hold for the final shot in scenarios like this, but in tournament play, you usually play somewhat differently. It's your chance to try a little bit more stuff out, but it looks like Francis and the Trojans are just going to hold on to this one. So they will enter halftime with a lead right now at six. Let's see if they can add more. Vikings just letting Francis have this time. As now they've called the plays. We're under 10 seconds. This is now Francis's blitz. They'll have to fire it over to Price. Corey driving into the lane. Corey trying to go behind his head to Langley. And now here's Montgomery getting in. He throws it up at the buzzer, gets it to go. So that's the second basket of the game for Terry Montgomery. And the Trojans, after leading by as much as 11 in this one, have it back down to just a four-point game at half. Closing these quarters has not been good tonight for Anderson. As they led by three and now just four. But looking at the Trojan side of things, Francis with seven points, Nate Langley leading the Trojans with nine. The only other guys in the scoring column are going to be Paige, Wagner, and Blackerby. Each of them have four. So 9.44 here on the clock as we head to halftime. We'll get a little bit more info as we uh, get started here, or as we get closer to the start of the second half. But for now, I want to thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast. Harry Breen and Herman, as well as Encotech, your sponsors of Trojan Basketball. And for us over here on RN for Vipe, the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans, all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. We've got nine minutes on the clock. We'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast tonight. I'm Jack Farrell joining you. We'll be back in just a minute. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE, Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull a hit by one. Log on to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you Vipe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information 
at Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a -a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What page to Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Vipe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at vipevype.com. Vipe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. What takes the Wilson? She fires the three. Oh my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to vipevype.com. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a -a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Back into it. Two minutes away from getting started in this second half. Your Trojans lead it by just four. Anderson trying to go 2-0 and to start their journey through the Anderson Classic. And right now, they're having a, a hard time with the Dulles Vikings. Fort Bend ISD down in Sugarland, I believe. But the thing that's been biting the Trojans is... is uh, they're starting quarters really well, but they're having a little bit of a tough time 
getting close. They're, they've led by double digits in each quarter, only to have this Viking team claw back into it both times. So let's see if the Trojans can come through in the second half and really stick it to them. As right now, I would say they're, they're winning this game by what feels like a whole lot more than four. A lot of these shots just not falling for Anderson. And uh, right now, Dulles is just taking what the Trojans are giving him, and they are doing a pretty good job finding open looks and getting some good baskets. This is the Trojan team that is ranked ahead of Fort Bend Dulles. Now just a minute ago, as your Trojans are back into the huddle, Vikings still getting some shots up. The possession arrow, uh, I'm not sure how it carries over. It looks like it'll be Trojan ball to start the half, though. Because it's pointing towards Anderson's bench. So it should be their ball, but you never know. So let's get everything updated to start this half. Ooh, as we have some history here tonight in the NBA, Memphis <laughs> defeats Oklahoma City 152 to 79. 73 point margin, it's the biggest in NBA history. Glad I'm not an OKC fan, but I am a Rockets fan, which isn't much better. Although, hey, four game win streak. Finals incoming, I dare say. As it'll be Trojan ball to start the half indeed, as here's Whitlow. Driving into the paint as he found Jack, got it a little bit behind him as Jack misses the layup, but he gets his own follow. Not repaying his teammate with the assist, unfortunately, but Jack will take the lay. Trojans first to 30 as they now lead by six as Ukpong just kind of slips. As here's Lee, Francis defending him. Lee has to stop. It's Wagner outside for Trescott. No, excuse me, that's Montgomery. Working around the perimeter. He's going to send Ook Pong through. Montgomery back outside for Trescott. Wagner going to switch off and stay on him. Once again, another switch. And right now, Dulles just working it around the perimeter quite a bit. Because we're a whole minute into the half. That's how you make this game end quickly if you wanted to. But here's Montgomery. Blackerby defending him. Montgomery's got to get off of him. That's close to five seconds. Here's Francis back outside for Lee. Attacking Blackerby. Now back outside. It's Walls spinning back out to Truscott. Now into the corner again for Montgomery. Montgomery going to drive on Jack. Go right at Blackerby. And Bennett influencing that shot as here's Francis the other way for the Trojans. All the way to the basket. Throws it up and can't get it to go. No friendly roll in the home gym for Jack Francis. As Truscott takes it coast to coast, he can't finish. And now batting it away is going to be Walls, and that's going to be Trojan Ball. The official on uh, this side of the sideline called it. As the two officials on the other end didn't have the call, but that will go the other end. It'll be Whitlow on the inbound. So after a minute and a half, Trojans get the ball back. Six seventeen to go here in the third. They get it to Langley up at the top of the key there. They try to get him some touches underneath. But here's Wagner. They left him open for three. That's going to be too short. Francis right there to get the rebound. Montgomery knocked it away. Back to Francis into Langley. Good dish. Nate Langley, patient. Francis basket. For two. And now Nate. He's up into double figures with 11. The Trojans have their lead back to eight, and this is it. They're starting this quarter very well. Defensively, they've scored on two of their three offensive possessions. Let's see if they can keep that moving throughout this quarter. Let's see what the Vikings, if they continue to keep trying to try this very patient strategy as Walls just got away with the travel. Now there's Montgomery. Blackerby defending him. He's going to drive in. Ooh, splits a double team. Good basket for Terry Montgomery. Not sure how he got through Whitlow and Blackerby, but he did. And now Blackerby cut into the basket, and that's got to be a goaltend. As two missed calls back-to-back -back for the Vikings. As here's Lee. He's going to get a three-pointer, and they're going to say he traveled, so a bit of a re- a bit of a makeup call for Anderson. As it looked like Walls got away with one off the glass. 
but no matter in the end is the turnover on the other end, so Trojans will just get the ball right back. Got to keep playing through it. Because here's Langley. We're back to the basket. Finds a cutting Wagner, and Wagner was a little bit too far deep, and then a good job from Lee to take the ricochet and get the steal anyway, and Whitlow is called for going through the body, and that's the right call against Whitlow. You can tell by Coach Pittsburgh's reaction that that's a foul on the Trojans. Because they're going to get Page in. And checking out is Whitlow. And that's what he's saying is don't foul him so far away from the basket. Just the first team foul, though, for Anderson. Five minutes to go here in the third. Here comes Walls. Six-point lead for the Trojans. Wagner. Picks him up. Now into the corner, it's Lee. Page defending him. Lee going to drive baseline. He's going to go for the pull-up. Langley, lucky he didn't get called for the whistle, moving into his space. Because Wagner has it poked away, and that is going to be Vikings ball, and Wagner can't believe it. And the first half, Trojans got the benefit of the whistle in the first quarter, but in this half, it's been all Vikings. So here's Montgomery. Back to Lee. Lee going to pull from way deep. He can't get that one as Blackerby takes it. They're going to let Bennett bring it up with a six-point lead. Almost halfway through this third. Bennett just going to dribble into a pull-up triple, and he knocks it down. Bennett Blackerby. His first three of the night. So here comes Walls. Speedy into the front court as they get it into Ukpong. Now back to Walls. He takes it. Stepping back. No good. Rebound underneath. Goes to Truscott. Wagner wasn't ready for that rebound. So now Trojans by seven. It's 35-28. Langley, he's going to attack the paint. Now kick it cross court to Page. He doesn't want to take the three. Instead, he's going to drive it to the basket and get fouled. Fouls on the shot. It's going to be on the Vikings. Number five, Carter Truscott. Foul on Carter Truscott. They have a Cole Truscott, but he hasn't gotten into the game yet here tonight. They look similar enough. I'm assuming they're brothers. As they've got a new sub in here, it's Tylen Pierre into the game. Hook Pong will head to the bench. As Page can't get that one to fall, Langley's there on the rebound, and he'll head to the line for two. So Colin Page, five points. Nate Langley's going to head back to the free throw line to add some more to this. He's got 11. That's another foul going against Truscott, and they run a pretty tight rotation, so I imagine they don't have a lot of ability to move. As now one of their players that was in this rotation in the game, Isaiah Meta, he's uh, been ruled out for the rest of this game with an ankle injury as Langley knocks it down. Trojans looking to push that lead back into double figures for the first time this half. They are up by nine, pending this Langley free throw. That is butter. Two for two. Timeout on the floor. 13 on Three the game he wants a for Nate Langley. As it looks like Coach Pitt, or excuse me, Coach Pittsburgh. There we go. Calling a timeout here. He'll just use a 30-second one. Is that some nice dirty work in the offensive glass for Nate Langley to get two more Don't points on the board for the Trojans? And once again, if the Trojans can pull off a victory here, they will be playing, I believe, at 7 p.m. As we still don't really know uh, what the brackets are looking like. We know the groups, but we haven't really formed it into brackets yet. It's because we have the bronze, silver, and gold brackets, but four pools. And... Right now, uh, the loser of this game will play at 2.30, and the winner of this game will play at 7. They will play the, well, whichever team is 2-0 and in the B pool, which is Medina Valley, Rockwall, and Travis. But we will not know who that is until tomorrow morning as Rockwall and Travis play at 8.30. So here's Walls. It kicks it across the Lee, and now it's Montgomery. Clock ticking under 3.5. Montgomery going to try and drive the paint. Francis goes up and knocks it away. That's a good, clean block from Jack Francis. Lobs it ahead to Wagner. He's going to take it one-on-one. -on -one. Basket is good. That's when the Trojans are at their best on offense when they get out and run. 
That's what they like to do is here's Walls driving in. Francis got a hand on it, forces the kick out. Uh, spinning and all the way to the basket, out of control is Montgomery. Now here's Wagner. Montgomery's behind him. They get it ahead to Page. Page had a pull-up three. Instead, he'll drive it to the basket. Avoids contact and gets Colin it to go. Page. Colin Page with seven off the bench. As here's Lee, all the way to the basket, right into Wagner. He misses, and now they're starting to get a little out of control. As Wagner crosses over into the front court, driving all the way to the basket, avoiding contact. Layup, scoop is good. Mike Wagner, the up and under. Eight points on the game for Mike Wagner as the Trojans are starting to run away with this one a little bit. They've got it up to 44. It's a 16-point game, their largest lead of the night. Time out on the floor, Vikings coach. It's going to be a full timeout. So we have a full timeout on the court. Going to go ahead and keep it here. Last season, it felt like the Trojans would get a lot of uh, a lot of box scores with two points, four points of uh, just like a lot of guys on the team. But lately this season, I feel like this Trojan team has really been only getting four or five guys into the scoring column. Tonight it's five. Jack Francis with nine. Blackerby and Page both with seven. Wagner with eight. And then Nate Langley, a team high of 13. She got the presidential scholarship at Abilene Christian. She's number two in her class, and I'm one proud dad. Let's hear for Kagan Buckman. Shout out Dr. B. Making the teeth of many Anderson students and Northwest Hills kids. Have fresh, nice teeth, me included. Great Hills growing up. Got to rep my, my area. Dr. Buckman has given me these nice pearly whites. And we also appreciate him even more doing this PA work. So he brings a certain vibe and energy to this gym. As right out of the timeout, it's going to be a turnover. Bad pass to Andrew Lim. Passed it too close to half court, and he was further down on the wing. So it looks like Trojans are starting to get this thing figured out as they have a 16-point lead with two and a half to go here in this third quarter. Might be a good opportunity to see some of these bench guys get into the game. Once again, no Ben Bazarian for, uh, for Westwood, or excuse me, not Westwood, for Anderson here tonight. Wagner working it around. Here's Langley. Now trying to get it into Francis as Jack was just trying to bat it out to Page. He saw the, the window had closed as Page knocks it away and into the hands of Langley. Colin Page with some more good defense tonight as he's going to take this one all the way. Dumps it off to Jack and Jack's shot is knocked away. Blackerby knocked it out of bounds and it's going to go the other way for the Vikings. But some good effort and a good pass underneath for Colin Page to change his number. He's listed at 23 but I know he's not number 23. He's big Larry Bird, number 33 out there. Two minutes to go. Score still 44 to 28. It's Nico Walls. Working it around. Over to the right wing. Now a good pass to Lim. That's a nice find on the cut. And Lim gets it into, well, back out to the corner. It's Lim. He's going to try the three. And that's going to rattle in for Andrew Lim. That might be a nice, much needed boost for them off the bench as they need to find some more offense and some more spot up shooters are a great way to get back into a game you trail. So here's Wagner directing traffic for the Trojans. Screen comes from Francis, now into Langley. Nate's trying to get it into Francis in the post. He's got Lim posted up and he gets the lay. 11 points now for Jack. He's into double figures. 46 31's your score. Here's Trust Scott. Gets it to Walls, and Walls gets to the basket, Nico lays it in. Nico Walls, that's his third basket of the game. Here's Wagner. Mike with it up top. Under a minute to go, he's going to pull up from the mid range. That's going to be no good. Now the Vikings starting to push. Here's Walls, he's got himself in the corner. Nico skips it cross court. That's Tylen Pierre. Now back outside walls, he's going to try a triple. That's going to be no good, too strong. High arcing rebound falls underneath to Langley. Now 35 seconds to go, and Wagner's just going to take it easy. So Trojans lead into the double figures. As barring disaster, it will stay there. As both teams doing a, a good, healthy amount. 
of clock burning. And that's all right, because it's made a, a pretty short game tonight. We're only about an hour in, and we're through three quarters. As Wagner gets it into Langley, he's wide open underneath. He's going to go up and under, can't get it. Francis has it now. Jack shot's blocked. Langley, Jack gets it back, and he can't get another shot off. So, yeah, that'll end the third quarter, 46 to 33. I'd like to thank our sponsor on tonight's broadcast, Academy Sports and Outdoors, as you know. Finally getting into that cold weather down into the 50s and 40s earlier last week. Can't wait. Can't believe it's taken this long to get cold. But if you want to stay warm, go on down to Academy Sports and Outdoors. They've got fleas. They carry all kinds of cool styles from today's hottest brands like Columbia, Crocs, Levi, Carhartt, and the North Face. So with that, going to go ahead and take another break. You're going to come back to the fourth quarter with us here. Got Trojan hoops for you on Vibe Live. It's the Anderson Classic. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the holiday season. Can't wait. My roommates are out buying a tree right now. Fourth quarter now. Trojans lead it by 13. Walls attacking Wagner. Wagner just strips it right away. That's going to go out of bounds. It's also Hanukkah right now, I believe. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah to those who observe it. And Merry Christmas to those who observe that. I love the holidays. Best time of the year. Mostly because you get Christmas break and you don't have to go to school. Because that's a miss underneath for Walls who gets his own board. But unfortunately, this is my, I think my last like actual Christmas break of my life. As I move on into the adult world next year as Lim throws up a wild basket and a good follow on the back side from Tylen Pierre. Senior season affects many of us. As kick across to Jackson Gill, who's into the game for the first time. He's in Fred Dale back. Saw Fred in limited minutes in the first half there, I believe. As here's Whitlow. Jab step into the corner. Gill's going to attack the closeout. Skip it into the corner for Dale. Wagner, ooh, they had Francis open from downtown if they were looking for it. And they get it back to Dale. Dale, foot on the line. Jumper is good. That's a deep two for Fred Dale. now on the other end. We find a cutting limb, and that's another basket Drew for Drew Lim. That's his second basket, Andrew Lim. He's got five. As here is Gill on the other end getting the lay. Jackson Gill, his first basket of the game. He's just a sophomore, so this Anderson team in good hands for the future. As here's Truscott. They get it in the limb. Lim finds Ukpong. Ukpong goes up and under, can't get it to go. Fred Dale skying up for the board, and now he's trapped underneath, just trying to find Whitlow, and he's going to turn it over, and that's going to be a... I think they awarded Anderson with a timeout. So good job by Dale, keeping that possession alive, and they get the timeout. So 50 to 37 now. Called by Jackson Gill, going to be a 30 second timeout. Gill into the scoring column. So now, now in the fourth quarter is when you see more guys start to add some points. Dale and Gill both now off the bench with a basket of their own here in the quarter. Just a 30-second timeout, so 52-37. Got to update that. As down 13, deep, ever deeper into this fourth quarter, Dulles is truly getting into the danger zone. Ugh, that was bad. That was another bad joke, bad pun. But I have to make it. If you're going to play Kenny Loggins, I have to reference the Kenny Loggins. Danny song? That song rocks. It doesn't rock, really. It's a good song. I should say that. Underrated Messina. 
But now with 6.08, Trojans with the lead by 13. Wagner gets it on the inbound from Whitlow as they lance it ahead to Blackerby. Now off to Gill. Gill doing a good job of just holding it and resetting. So now Trojans can get into their offense. Six minutes to go here at the end of the game. <laughs> this one's taken away by Montgomery, but Wagner is there. They take it right back, throws it off Montgomery, and then Whitlow lost it, and they're going to say it's off the Vikings. It's a controversial call. Vikings fans weren't happy. Vikings coach wasn't happy as they just get it to Whitlow. Whitlow nearly wasn't ready for that as they get it to Dale. Now Fred's stuck with it on the wing. going to try and get it back to his PG. He does. Wagner driving in. Loses it into the corner. Blackerby wide open for three. Yes. Second three of the game for Bennett. Gives the Trojans a 16-point lead as the clock continues to dwindle on this game for the Vikings. That's a good backdoor cut. And nearly a good find, but Blackerby kicked it. And once again, kickball, not a foul or anything. It's just a, you just reset. It's like you knocked it out of bounds. So after the kick ball, they're trying to get it in. That's, an, ooh, they just got that timeout off. So to avoid the five-second violation, it's 53-37. to 37, Trojans in the driver's seat. On the floor, Vikings go. Looks like it's going to be a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take that break with them. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. It's the Trojan Classic. We've got more all season. We'll be back tomorrow. Vibe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, Philly pulls up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Back in for more fourth quarter action as we've got some sweet child of mine. Anyone else play Guitar Hero 3? They had the they had Welcome to the Jungle and you could play a Slash. Oh, I thought that was great. It'll be Montgomery in on the inbound. Looking, they're almost going to burn another five seconds as they get it into Pierre just in time as Montgomery's going to go up with it. He's got some good ability finishing at the rim despite his size. As they get it down to just 14 again. Now here's Gill. Crosses over. Trying to find his way through and he gets it to Wagner. As Willow's going to try from downtown and he knocks it down. It's now 39 to 56 off the three-pointer for Mitchell Whitlow. Good to see one go down for him as he's struggled a little bit on the offensive end since the early part of the season, and that's a good find underneath. And we're going to have a foul on Anderson. They got Trescott going to the line. It's going to be on the Trojans. 35. Digital Brown here. So now 56-39, 4-44. Make a wish on the clock. Carter Truscott will shoot two. Truscott can't get that one to fall, so he's got one more. So now Anderson with a 17-point lead. Not a lot of fouls here in the second half, just four, two apiece on each team. So we probably won't have a lot of free throws at the end of the game at least in the bonus, but that's a rebound underneath for Pierre and a big miss from Montgomery, and now Blackerby's going to take it. They've got him out and running. Blackerby's going to take it all the way to the basket, and they're going to get a block underneath. It looked like Montgomery might have been there, but just a, just, a, just a fraction of a second too late on Terry Montgomery, who's got eight points tonight for the Dulles Vikings. So Bennett heads to the line for two. He's into double figures with ten points tonight. He's canned a couple triples. 56-39, 4.33 to go is now we are starting to get some free throws. Got to wipe down the court. Don't want to have any bad injuries as 
that's the scariest thing, just have slipping on what basically amounts to black ice on a basketball court, just some, some moisture from players going down. Bennett can't hit both. As Fred Dale is there to take away the board, he turns into an open layup and he misses it. Batted around, Whitlow gets it, now back to Blackerby. So Bennett now with 11. They've got 57 to 39, looking to make it a 20 point game with a basket here. Whitlow, he's gonna try another three. Ooh, nearly banked that one in, but it is 9.30, so the bank is closed. Here's Lee, another bad joke. <laughs> Four minutes to go. Donahoe and Campbell. Campbell Duncan, excuse me, getting ready to chuck in. Campbell Duncan, that name throws me off. It's two last names. As spinning jumper, no good by Truscott. Montgomery can't get the follow. Batted around. Now Blackerby behind everybody has it. It's one-on-one -on -one with him and Walls. He's just going to get the layup. Walls not going to try it. And just like that, Bennett Blackerby with a team high tying Langley of 13 is missing that play on the other end. But here's Gill on the other end. Gill's going to take it up and under. Can't get the layup. And Wall's going to take it the other way. Three and a half to go. Here's Lee. Lee going to dribble into a pull-up triple. It's no good. Rebound batted and taken away by the Vikings. They get it into Lee. Wagner's defending him, and that's knocked away. Foul called on Whitlow. Got a foul on the shot. So with Francis on the bench, imagine that his night is over along with Langley with just 321 and a 20-point lead for the Trojans. As we've hit a bit of, bit of a scoring drought that Lee has a good chance to end by hitting a couple free throws here. He is the closest Viking to double figures with nine, and he has a chance to add it here. A little bit of a knuckleball. Not a lot of rotation on that free throw. As we're getting mass subs in the game for the Vikings. Let's see who's checked in. We've got some new names into the game now. It is Eli Brawley, number 20, and here number 15, Caleb Adoma. Blackerby out. So in for Anderson, it's going to be Wagner, Donahoe, Price, Gill, and Duncan. So he makes the second. Ten points on the game for Josh Lee. They get it down to 19. Three minutes to go. Wagner dribbles to his right, pulling back. Nice Nice pocket pass to Duncan who can't get the finish, but Liam Donahoe is there on the glass to get the layup. So count the offensive board and the lay-in for Liam Donahoe. He's got his first points. Fresh off his check-in. So 61 to 40. Here's Lee, now back outside. Here's Pierre. He's driving into the lane, turning, spinning into the jump shot. It's no good, rimming out. And Gill grabs it underneath. Now they're going to make Jackson take it up as he's going to be defended, but Pierre will pull off here. So 61 to 40, as here's Gill, gets it to Price. Corey, ooh, lost it trying to go behind the back, and he gets it back and goes to Donahoe. Donahoe putting it on the floor. He has Gill, and instead he's just going to take it himself. Jackson was wide open in the corner, but Donahoe, and it looks like Lim might have taken an elbow to the stomach, but he's okay running down the floor. Just wind knocked out of him a, a, him a touch there. But now driving in is Lee. Lee's going to throw up a floater and two shots. Foul goes on Liam Donahoe. They'll put in Cole Truscott, the assumed brother of Carter Truscott, who's one of the key rotation players for the Vikings here tonight. Also ready to check in. Number 13, Memi Shaw. Now here's Lee at the line. He hits the first. Just Lee's back at the line. He makes the first one. He'll shoot one more. Sixty-one, forty-one. Lee with another free throw. Gets them both this time, so he's up to 12. Here's Gill. Moving the ball up for the Trojans. It's a 19-point lead for them. They get it into Donahoe. Liam almost lost it, and then they'll find Armour. Back outside, here's Price. Wide open for three. 
Way off. Rebound goes to Duncan. Price back with it outside. Minute 45 left to go. Price working his way in. He's got an, ooh, he had an opportunity, but that's stolen away. And, ooh, don't foul him this far from the basket. Trojans with 14 fouls, so not close to the bonus yet. With 90 seconds to go, that won't be a factor. Here's Shaw. Gets it into Pierre. Pierre to the paint. Got caught in the air, and that's taken away by a combination of Trojan players. It was Duncan and Donahoe. As here's Price all the way to the basket. Misses another one underneath as Donahoe gets the rebound. Too low on the pass for Duncan, and it looks like we're going to have a jump ball. That'll stay here, though. And now checking into the game for the first time is Andrew Alexander. And it looks like we have Kaitlin Hull. Kaitlin Hull came in and scored four points off the bench in, a, in garbage time earlier this season. So now we got the bench goons. Best part of the night. <laughs> this is where a lot of my high school basketball career operated. Jacking threes off the bench. My specialty. As here is Armour up top. They get it into Donahoe. Good find and a good finish. Donahoe. Liam's got four as the bench loves it, as does the student section. And a long three. That's good. Big shot. Caleb Adoma. Sixty-three forty-five, and Anderson doesn't have to do much here. But Corey going to try for a three. It's no good. Rebound underneath to the man that just knocked down that shot from outside. Sixty-three forty-five. Now step back jumper is no good for Brawley, and with thirty seconds, just take it easy. Sixty-three forty-five. Trojans lead it by eighteen. They don't need it to get another. Or they don't need to to shoot another shot, but. You, know, you never know. You got the bench guys in. This here's prices. That's a he's pretty deep for that count to be to be going. But with 12 seconds back outside to Price and eight and counting, so we should have the end of the game here. As Vikings aren't are playing to the final whistle here. Donahoe kills his dribble. Just hold it and that'll do it. That's a ball game. So the Trojans in the Anderson Classic come out 2-0 and with victories over Dulles and Central Catholic. Not exactly sure who they will be playing yet tomorrow, but we do know that that game will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. So 7 p.m. Friday night, we will have more Trojan basketball for you. But for now, we've got a final score. Come back tomorrow, we got nine games. Nine more games for you, starting at 8.30. Luckily, Anderson will not have to play the late game tomorrow. They're not that generous of hosts. So they will come back at 7 o'clock tomorrow, the prime time showing. As we'll let you know who they are playing uh, basically as soon as we know, which won't probably be until sometime tomorrow morning. But with the victory here, Trojans move to 2-0, and putting themselves in pretty good position. To, uh, to move into the silver bracket at worst. So the Trojans are going to come out at least uh, in the upper part of this uh, of their own tournament here. You never know what is going to happen. you got some very tough teams, including a Westlake team uh, here in this tournament that Anderson will play next week for sure. So going through the Trojans box score, as well as the uh, Dulles Vikings, for Josh Lee, he was the, the man on top for the Vikings. He had 12. Terry Montgomery put in eight, and Nico Walls put in seven. But on the Anderson side of things, it was Nate Langley and Bennett Blackerby scoring the bulk of the points. They both had 13. Jack Francis with 11. And on down the line, Mike Wagner with eight. Colin Page with a really fun game. He had seven. Liam Donahoe with four. Mitch Whitlow knocked down a three in the fourth quarter. He had three points. And then Fred Dale and Jackson Gill both off the bench of the fourth quarter, getting a basket of their own. So a good showing for the Trojans, and we will have more Anderson basketball for you tomorrow. So for now, we're going to go ahead and sign off. But first, one more time, we want to thank our sponsors on tonight's broadcast. For your Anderson Trojans, it's Harry Breen and Herman, the sponsor of the Anderson Classic, as well as Enco Tech. And for us here at Vipe, we'd like to thank Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy. Shop in-store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and put the headsets down and tear down the equipment 
7 p.m. We will be back tomorrow for some more Anderson basketball. We'll have one more game uh, sometime early in the afternoon, Saturday as well, most likely, sometime in the early afternoon. I have been Jack Farrell. This was a fun game for Anderson, especially that second half. It really felt like they were able to figure things out against this Vikings team. Going to go ahead and sign off. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest of your week. We'll come back on Friday. For now, good night.